Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back. I hope that you guys are having an amazing day because I am. I mean, it's always a great day when I get to see you. I'm sorry y'all. It's just another great day in the life of the Lily, okay? In the life of the Lily, honey. <laughs> you know, I have to be honest, I wanna take a second. I'm trying to think of a name, guys. I'm trying to think of a name. I was thinking, should we be called like the Lily Gang? Get it out the mud gang? Should we be called the, <clears throat> we're trying to get the singling, seed, seedlings? Seedlings of the Lilies? I don't know. I need some really good ideas because I want to have a name that's genuine to us. I feel like we've got it out the mud. You know what I'm saying? We started as a little bitty seed and baby we grew into some beautiful lilies. So that's why I like that one. But I also really just want to have something that's genuine to you guys so that we can like bond. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, I love what I do. I mean, I love talking to you guys. I feel like we're a family. So just throwing it out there, guys. Now let's get into this video. I mean, we got these tickets and we got these talks. We're gonna talk away today, guys. Take a talk away. Let's get it. Theater that has been abandoned since 2013. It's located in Globe, Arizona and dates back to 1954. It's a single screen drive-in that had enough room for about 150 cars. Now, according to Tucson.com slash business, a fire destroyed the original wooden screen in 1972. However, it was later rebuilt by Frank Hollis and reopened in 1974. Now, the drive-in had a near 60-year run, but as the digital age approached, 35mm films were getting harder to come by, and it would have costed around $130,000 to convert to a digital projector, and the owners just couldn't afford it. On September 28, 2013, they had a farewell celebration, which included a 1960s costume contest and a final oh. showing of American Graffiti. I really feel like it would be really cool if we can bring back the drive-in. I mean, yes, we have all this high-tech stuff and we can watch stuff at home, but it's something nostalgic about being able to go to the drive-in, sit down in the car, get yourself some popcorn, and a girl like me, honey, I'm gonna get me some pretzels and some cheese. <laughs> We're just saying having those nostalgic moments is nothing that can replace something old school that has a memory. I mean, guys, have you guys gone to the to the to the drive-in movie? I went a few times. I didn't go as much, but when I did go, it was so much fun. And I have to be honest, my husband and I was trying to find one just a couple years ago to be able to go, and the one closest to us closed. And I'm like, oh my gosh. We have no more drive-ins. Some things we need just to be able to keep on to old memories and create new ones with our children or with our friends. I mean, it makes me so sad that it's not as many as it should be around to have that moment. I mean, heck, a lot of the movie theaters are leaving too. <laughs> I think we only have like two or three movie theaters left around me, but I, I don't know, something about the drive-in that cannot be replaced. You know, it's too cool. Number six, Desert Center, California. Founded in 1921 Ooh, by Stephen Ragsdale, I like this. back in its prime, Desert Center was a pretty bustling place, being the halfway point between Phoenix and Los Angeles. This was a place where travelers could stop, get a bite to eat, take a break from being on the road, or light a cigarette and enjoy the next five minutes before your wife and kids <laughs> get back in the car. Desert Center had everything from a cafe, post office, gas and service station, Ooh. and a few other small businesses. But nowadays, you can be driving down the interstate and not even notice it. The only business that's still active in Desert Center today is the post office, with a few occupants that still live nearby. Oh, wow. After poking my head in a few of the buildings, I was able to see some of the items that were left behind. Oh, my god! In some of the other buildings, it almost looks as if time stood still. This building that you see right here was the only school in Desert Center. It was built for the Ragsdale's children in the 1940s and ran up until 1983 when it was shut down. And from the research that I compiled, it seems that over time, people just moved out. Members of the family passed away, and no one left to run the businesses. It may not be the little rest stop town that it once was, but over 100 years later, it's barely hanging out. Okay, so let's talk about this. First of all, I love being able to see towns um, that were of importance or like the remnants of it. I think it's so cool because it has so much history there that we just don't know about. I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't never heard of this. If you guys heard about it, you let me know. I just thought it was really cool just to see the old school stuff. Like, I know y'all saw that TV. 
I don't know when that TV was made, but it was definitely <laughs> a nostalgic TV. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy how towns can be thriving and amazing and then out of nowhere, it's just, it dwindles and it's gone. And I think what he said definitely holds true because if, I even say for me, I came from a town, I don't live there no more. <laughs> I left that town. I was like, okay, bye. I mean, I think that's what happens with the younger generation. We don't want to stay in a particular area because we want to go explore somewhere else. And it leaves that a town to be abandoned. You know what I'm saying? It's so sad that that town has, it's, it's, it's perished. It's nothing really left besides seeing old things and old memories. I wonder if it'll be, you know, if it's cheaper to, to be able to purchase that entire town and build it back up. You know, someone who has that type of money. Okay, I don't. <laughs> but if somebody had that type of money just because they said that it was, you know, in between two major cities, that uh, it was a rest area for that. I mean, I'm pretty, uh, the only thing left is a post office. I mean, gosh darn, where do the people live if it's just a post office? <laughs> the little people that's left in the town, where they live at? I'm just curious. I mean, might as well get rid of the post they sent the, uh, the post office too. Just something to think about. If someone has enough money, they can definitely come back in there and restore it and maybe bring it back to, to its glory. But I just thought it was so cool just to see the school. I mean, obviously it's gonna be graffiti because you know, the graffiti artists, they love to go put their art all over and especially in abandoned places. I mean, I just think it's so cool how the, the desks were still there. You know, some things you were still able to see that it was a school. Um, I don't know, that was just really cool to me. I mean, come on guys, let's keep going. I'm gonna be honest, those are bad. One thing I thought was so funny, I don't know if you guys can be able to see the caption at the bottom, but it said alien jokes, dad jokes. I will say yes, those were definitely some dad jokes. <laughs> those things are called either strawberry candies what i don't know what that thing is called i know they nasty though i don't like them <gasps> did he just spin <laughs> okay so what i saw he only retaliated, okay? The man just retaliated because the 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 he got spit on, so he spit back. <laughs> That's what it looked like to me. Okay, let's see. You're gonna learn today. Listen to the woman who wrote the Matrix and okay. the Terminator. Well, that's what the Matrix is about, to wake you up from the Matrix. It gets mm. you out of the illusions and the lies and the ignorance. Mm -hmm. So it's not dangerous for me because that's my job. That's what I came here to do. Mm -hmm. That's why I wrote the Matrix and Terminator to wake people up so they can move on to greater, better things. Yeah, but the Terminator is the prequels to uh, the beginning of the Matrix. Mm. Sarah Connor is actually Neo's mother. So JC, John Connors, Jesus Christ grows up to be Neo, one and the same in the Matrix. Mm. The Matrix is in the future. The Terminator's the past, it's time travel, past, present, and future time travel. It's the second coming of the Christ, the evolutions of consciousness, man versus the machine. So the machines, the Terminator machines, hear that a child is going to be born that's going to terminate them in the future when they oppress man. Mm -hmm. You see, it's a man versus the machine. It's God's children 
versus man's children, which was technology. All right, so let's talk about the Matrix and the Terminator. First of all, I just learned that a woman of color made like created this. I had no idea. I think I learned it a few years ago. I was like, okay, girl, you go here with your bad self. Uh, you know, that's what I said in the beginning. Okay, now let's talk about this. First of all, the matrix is so deep. Like it's so deep, it doesn't make any sense. Like I really, when she stated that it's God's children against technology, I mean, gosh darn, is that not what we're kind of experiencing? AI is trying to take over everything. I mean, gosh darn, they have trucks that can drive themselves. 18 wheelers that drive themselves. I mean, heck, we do have cars that drive themselves, but I mean, I think it's more like detrimental for an 18 wheeler because I mean, gosh darn, if the system goes down, what's going to happen? I mean, what is going to happen? I think it's amazing that this beautiful woman was able to articulate how she felt in her brain into books, which came into movies that really has to do with our life and what we're going through or what future generations will go through. The fact is, is are we going to take it seriously? Are we really going to sit back and go watch Terminator again and go back again and watch all the matrixes, all the matrixes? <laughs> I think I said that right. You know, and really dabble into it. Understanding how she was thinking about when she was writing it instead of taking our own notion from the movie. This is deep. Like this is really making me want to sit down with my husband and rewatch all this stuff to think a little bit deeper. Cause you know what I'm gonna say? You gotta squint your eyes and tilt your head just a little bit, just to think a little bit deeper to know a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? That was a lot. Nineteen ninety seven. Oh, pine beer. What does it say for the price? $150 is too expensive to me now. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Let's talk about this inflation, okay? I mean, I didn't know that um, cars were only 16000 16, I mean, gosh darn, I would love to get a car for $16,000 right now. I ain't gonna sit here in front to you. A brand new one though, not a used one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just crazy. That scenario that they showed, it said, was in 1997. So in 1997, I believe I was in seventh grade. Yes, I think I was like in seventh grade in 1997. And to think about, I mean, to me, I'm gonna be honest, rent, it said rent was like $500, five something. I think that's kind of expensive for back then. But back then I know um, owning a home was cheaper than renting back then. And I think now they're both expensive. It doesn't matter which one you go with. <laughs> they're both expensive. Um, it's just crazy though, to look at this and be like, geez, if we lived back then, we would be rich. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we could have bought our house in two years. <laughs> with the amount of money that we pay for things now. I don't understand. I don't understand like economics when it comes to inflation and why why it happens the way it does. I just feel like we have to put a stop to it because no one's gonna be able to afford anything. Pretty soon, it seems like a loaf of bread is gonna cost like $20, $30. And I mean, that's ridiculous. But what can I say? What can I say, you know? I guess this is just the life that we live now. But it, it's really hard looking back at things and realizing that your parents had it, I won't say a lot easier, but it was easier for them to take you places than f for you to take your kids places because it's like triple, dipple, triple, dipple the price. But let's keep going, guys. Is Beverly Hills one of the richest? I don't know, let's see. Ooh. 
what he gonna show us today? Y'all know I like these things. Let's see what we got. I think it's so cool when you scroll in and like you can see the outlining of the city and you scroll in a little bit further, you can see the houses. I just think that's so cool. It's nice. There's like no privacy at all anymore. No matter where you live, they gonna bring it up on Google. <laughs> I mean, um, I think you hit it with the rack. What's that thing called? That's a nice pool. Look like an infinity pool, y'all. I mean, this was a very interesting video we had today. I mean, we went from seeing nostalgic things to realizing the reality of our life today. I mean, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the time. I'm a I am grateful for the experience. I hope that you guys had fun. Um, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this. I hope you did, because you know I did, honey. You know I did. As always, I appreciate you guys. And until next time, bye!